How's everybody doing today? You're watching Slot Car Mayhem. I'm John and this is episode 11 of the Glendale 65 and today we're going to talk about getting wires to the track sections themselves for the power taps. Okay some of the items that I have here of course I've got a selection of tapes. I've got a high quality duct tape. I've got some blue masking tape uh, that I use to mark the track. I've got uh, some electrical tape just in case it's needed. It probably won't be. I've got just standard wire cutters, wire strippers, things like that. And if you're going to be soldering, in some cases we may need to solder some stuff. Besides your soldering iron, you want a good quality solder and you want to have some flux. And I also highly recommend some uh, alcohol and a toothbrush to scrub your solder connections once they're cooled down. Uh, this flux can be a little corrosive uh, at times. So making sure that we scrub it clean, we'll make sure that they're going to last for a good long time. Okay, looking at the track itself, if you remember back in episode 9, I suggested putting a piece of tape on the edge of the track indicating the direction of travel. I've got a car located here so you can see what I'm talking about. And we want to do that so we can help maintain the polarity. Once the track is wired, the polarity uh, becomes important and this track is now a polarized piece so it has to go back in the same way it came out once we get this wired up. Okay taking a look at the car that I have sitting here indicating direction of travel and where a piece of tape is it's pretty easy to understand where the positive rail is. In this case if you imagine you're the driver sitting in the car it doesn't matter which side of the car you would be sitting on uh, you're just in the car as it's driving down the track, the left hand rail will be your positive. Just keep that in mind and as you're checking voltages and things on the layout afterwards, just remember for the uh, United States, the driver's side or any other case, the left hand side of the car is where the positive rail is. Very easy to remember that way. Okay, here would be an example if we were using clips. Now these clips here I have pulled out of an accessory track and I am using these uh, in another section here. And you can see it's a very simple, uh, very small, uh, just very simple bend with a little tab on it and that's it. These are very easily manufactured if you want to build some out of uh, maybe some five thousandths or ten thousandths brass or copper sheet if you can find it. Uh, very easy to cut and fold these to the shape that's needed. If you don't want to use the clips, I can show you another method. But the clips work very well and they're very easy to use. And I simply just solder uh, the leads I need right to the clip themselves. And uh, that's it. That's all you really need to do. And we will be taping these in once they're in place. And putting them in is very simple. It's just a matter of putting it in the hole and sliding it in until it snaps and that's it it's in they're very simple to get in and out and they work very well so if you have a bunch of these clips uh, I highly recommend them you can buy uh, clips with wires already soldered on from Carrera and if that was the case I would just unsolder the wires and add my own uh, you can buy uh, some of these from Slot Car Space Solutions they do have them in stock from time to time and they have little tabs uh, with little crimps so you can add your own wire from there once again, I would remove all that and just solder my wires directly to it. That's just me for personal preference. Uh, so there's a lot of other alternatives. In the case here, like I said, I've pulled these out of some accessory tracks that I won't be using uh, as accessory tracks anymore. And they will be, uh, the reason why I have the accessory tracks is for my wireless charging stations. And those are very soon to be relocated off of the layout itself, off the track and so those accessory tracks will no longer be needed. So uh, out of one of them I've grabbed some of these clips just to check and see how well they work and these work just fine. Okay in this example here though I'm going to show you how to do this without using clips. Uh, there's a, a method that works pretty much just as well as using clips. But let's take a look at the track as a whole. Once again let me grab my car here again. I've got the piece of tape here as instructed in episode 9 indicating direction of travel and that's important and we want to keep that on our left hand side as we're doing our work. 
and I just do it the same way all the time that way I know where I'm at at any given point in time once we have this piece of tape we can flip it over on the long way and just so we don't lose orientation I'll put another piece of tape here just so you can clearly see it's the same side of the track well now when we do this when we're looking at a rail pair the upper rail on the rail pair will be the positive the lower rail will be the negative the same thing goes for the uh, this rail here the upper rail is the positive the lower rail is the negative very easy to keep your polarity correct at this point okay so let's talk about wire for a minute and uh, throughout episode 10 I know I kept posting about how all the wiring I'm using is 16 gauge and that's definitely the case here all my spools of wire with the exception of this one which I'm not really using at this point but all the other spools of wire they're all 16 gauge and uh, it's a decent quality wire and they'll work pretty good but what I want to make sure you do is I want to make sure that if you're going to be doing something like this with a bunch of different spools go ahead and uh, club together a uh, just a spool holder like I've done here and it's very simple it's just a hunk of wood with uh, some holes drilled in it and some dowel rods stuck in and I can just store my spools on here and I just made a little end piece here with some holes in it and I can just grab the wire that I need to grab and in this case I could use both of them and I can just grab them and pull the wire out as I need and get the length that I need of the wire that I want to use or in this case two different wires I want to use and then when I'm done I can just roll them back up very very simple and it really makes a nice job of uh, keeping it easy to do your wiring instead of having to have spools laying all over the place and trying to unwind and wind spools back up this just makes things so much easier so spend 10 minutes throw one of these things together out of scrap and you'll be uh, really happy that you did okay back at the track piece here and I've cut myself some wire uh, to the length I need and I leave myself maybe an extra foot just to make sure I've got plenty of room to work with and I've also cut some shorter pieces and uh, once again these are way over long but it'll give me the room to bridge from uh, one side of the rail to the other so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in with the long wire attach here and it's gonna be doubled up with a short piece and the short piece will jump over to this rail here so um, first things first I'm going to start by stripping some wire and this is a way a good way you can do it without having to use clips so I'll strip oh a good two inches inch and a half two inches off of here and I'll do the same thing on the short piece and there we go and then I will just twist them together just like so and you don't have to be 100% perfect with them but get a good solid twist on there okay so now we got this long unstripped portion here so what we're going to do is we're going to take and we're going to put a little bend in it just like so just like that and then we're going to take the end and we're going to pinch the end down just like that and you can leave this back end here frayed out a little bit that'll be even better and that's kind of what we're going to do and then at that point it's very simple just to go ahead and just like a clip push your wire in now one thing we do want to do is we want to make sure we go all the way up to the insulation and we get our insulation all the way up there because we don't want any shorts and I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing for the negative once again, I'm going to strip and strip. I mean, strip wire, not strip. I don't think anybody wants to see that today. And we'll go ahead and twist. Starting to sound like we're twerking over here. Stripping and twisting, stripping and twisting. Good. We'll do a quick little bend. And we want our bend about three quarters of the way, maybe halfway into the wire. And then we're going to pinch it. And if you want to, you can fray the end out a little bit, just like that. 
And once again, I said the top rail is the positive, the bottom rail will be the negative. So we'll go ahead and we'll insert our negative rail into place. Just like that. And once again, we're going to push it all the way down to the insulation. Good. Now, now that we have that done, now it comes actually one of the most important parts is we're going to separate the long and the short. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to start taping these down. And for that I use duct tape. And you don't want to use cheap duct tape. Use some decent duct tape and uh, it'll last a good long time if we do this. I can't overestimate the importance of the duct tape. It makes a big difference and it will help keep everything in place. Now one thing you're going to notice here before we take this down is these wires are actually going over the uh, bottom of the slot and these are going to stick out a little bit. I'm not too concerned about that because I'm going to be putting this on top of yoga mat and I can just simply cut out the middle area and all this stuff will sit and we won't notice any change in elevation. You might notice a little bump uh, in your track and that's perfectly fine. If you want to, you can bring your wires out through the uh, slots here for the uh, uh, track connectors, the track clips. That's fine, you can do that. Um, but other than that, I haven't noticed a problem with it. So now that we have our wiring in place, make sure everything's good and tight. I'm going to drop a piece of duct tape over it. And we want to make sure everything's good and tight. So really work that tape in there and make sure it's holding everything down really, really nice. And I can't tell you how important it is to make sure we've got a good taped connection because this will make a big difference and it also helps seal this area off from any other uh, damage that may be occurred. Good. Now that we have that, let's take a look and see what we've got. So I'm going to add a small piece right here. And this is going to be to just help hold the stuff in place. And I'm going to put a piece right here. And this will just help hold the center. So I've got my wires coming out near the center of the track. Once again, make sure everything's good and tight. And I've got to do the same thing here, where now I'm going to be adding in connections here. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this. Once again, about, oh, so far, give it a little cut. We're going to do just like the other one without the twisting. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to strip it. We're going to twist it. We're going to fold it. Bend it back, just like so. And we're going to insert it. Now, when we're doing these doubles, or these singles, you'll have plenty of room to actually get the insulated wire itself up into the track. So uh, I recommend you do that. That's going to help keep things in perspective and keep everything uh, good and aligned. So go ahead and cut. And you can see this does not take very long at all. Strip again. Let's give a little bit more on there. Twist. Don't have to be perfect. And fold. And pinch. Just like that. And you see it's pretty well frayed and that's perfectly fine. We'll go ahead and we'll get it in place. Shove it in. We're good. Now that that's in, we'll do the same thing. We're going to go ahead and we're going to tape over it. Make sure everything's down nice and tight. Work that tape in there the best you can. Make sure it's in nice and tight. Good. Okay. And then I'm going to take and put another one here in the middle. Just help make sure everything's held down nice. You don't have to be overly neat about it. It's going to work fine. Very good. Okay. So. There we are. We have a wired in piece of track here. Now what I'm going to do next, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to strip a little bit off the ends here, just so I can do a quick continuity check. 
and make sure I've got continuity, electrical continuity, and to make sure everything functions the way it should. Here I've got my digital multimeter and I'm going to put it on the diode scale. In this case it would be uh, you know, a diode check. If not, I can put it under 200 ohms. It doesn't really matter. It's going to go ahead and it's going to give you uh, your reading if you have continuity. Very simple. There we go. Okay, we got continuity. Okay, so I'm going to start by checking each side. And remember, like I said, the left side from direction of travel is the positive rail. So I've got my red wire here. And I'm touching it here, and you can see I've got continuity. I'll go over to the other positive rail. I have continuity. And if I go to the negative rail, I have no continuity, and we don't want any uh, on the different polarities. I'll do the same thing with the negative. I have continuity. I have continuity. None and none. So good. So this piece of track, we've got a power tap on it and we didn't use clips. Imagine that. It was nice and simple and easy to do. So now all that's left is to go ahead and get this piece of track put back into the layout. Okay, here we are back at the track and uh, you can see that I've drilled a, in this case, a three quarter inch hole. Normally I drill a one inch hole, but me being me, I dropped my one inch spade bit on the concrete floor and broke the tip. So until I get another one, three quarter inch should be good. But normally I drill a little bit bigger hole to feed the wires through. Just makes life a little bit easier and gives me a little bit room for adjustment. But you can see we've got our car sitting on here for direction of travel. I'll just move that off camera here. And I still have my piece of tape showing my direction of travel. In this case, it's going this way. So really at that point, it's a simple matter of just feeding your wires down through the hole, just as you need to, and putting your track piece back into place. Very, very simple to do this. Okay, and we've got our track piece ready to go back in. So I'll get all this connected back in, then I'll take you underneath the table and show you how I ran all the wiring. Okay, here we are underneath the track. And this here is the wire that I just ran, or the wire going to the piece of track I just installed. And you can see I'm just using a few of these clips just to help stop it from sagging. We don't want it going too far, but we don't want anything tight. Uh, everything needs to remain nice and comfortable and kind of loose and that'll just keep everything in place and nothing's going to get stretched or nothing's going to do anything it's not supposed to do. So uh, just make sure you keep your wiring loose and if you really want to you could add another clip here but I don't see the need. It's not going anywhere and it's not going to hang down and sag and uh, none of this will be visible of course once they get the fascia in but this makes it really convenient just to get to and to move things around as I need to. Okay, so here we are at the track, and here's the uh, new wires I ran. You can see I left quite a bit of room, uh, a fair amount of extra wire to give me plenty of room to work. I've got my joist unbolted, dropped flat, and slid out a little bit. And I'll just go ahead and match my lengths best I can to what's already there. I'll go ahead and make my cuts. And please make sure your control unit is off at this point makes life a lot easier okay then I'll go ahead and I'll take and I'll do my strip about a quarter of an inch about like that nice little twist I'll go ahead and I'll add myself a terminal now if you're gonna do the terminals I highly recommend getting yourself a good set of crimpers those flat little uh, scissor type crimpers that come with the kits that have a million of these terminals Things are junk. Um, a good set of crimps, a good set of crimpers can really make your life a lot easier. So in this case, I'm going blue because that's the terminal I'm using. And this is a ratchet type, so I can give it a light little click and it'll hold it in place really nice, not going anywhere. And then it's just a matter of inserting your wire. And I use, well, make sure it's twisted good. I want a good clean connection. Insert your wire and make sure it's pushed in fully. Make sure it's good at the end. 
and go ahead and just one squeeze and it's done our crimp is done and so far with all the crimps I've done they've all come out the same way I've got a really good crimp solid it's not coming loose and the insulation is not cut so I'll go ahead and I'll do my other side here for my negative again about a quarter of an inch nice little twist and I will put my terminal into my crimpers nice little gentle little squeeze just to help hold it in place I want to make sure you got a good solid twist in place it's fully seated pinch and we're done and once again I check and make sure it's not coming off and I look at the insulation and make sure it's not damaged and everything seems to be good so we got two really good crimps here now it's just a simple matter of unscrewing my terminals and adding in the new wire now these terminals here on these 12 terminal strips are pretty small and uh, it can get a little busy at times so the first terminal I have here you can see I've got it where it's uh, you got your terminal and then it bends down and that'll give me additional room to go ahead and add another terminal and this one here I can get it in and when I tighten down I can bend it up and I've got plenty of room to add in all my terminals okay, make sure it's good and snug then we'll bend that up just a little bit I'll do the same thing here with this one And you can see how easy it is to uh, I'm just standing up here I'm not under the table so it makes it really easy to do my wiring and once those are in I can go ahead and I can put my cover back on and that just snaps in place and there we go then it's just a simple matter at that point of putting the joist back in where it goes and I can tuck my wiring right down in the side and it's out of the way Okay, here we are back at the track. I've disconnected the wiring back from the terminal block again, and I've turned on the control unit. I've already checked to make sure we didn't have any shorts, but we wanna go ahead and do a quick voltage check just to make sure everything's good. So once again, I've set it on the 20 volt scale for DC volts, and I'm gonna go ahead and check the voltage at the wiring end itself. Okay, what I'm doing now is I've re-disconnected the wiring from the track and I've turned on the control unit because I want to check my voltages and make sure they're good so uh, let's go ahead and get this knocked through and what I've done I've set my voltmeter to DC volts on the 20 volt scale and I'm going to go red to red and black to black on the wire which is over here and I'm going to touch these and you can see we've got 13.83 13.84 volts right here at the unit and if I check the track locally in the same area I should have the same voltage and I'm going to do that off camera real quick once again the left rail from a driver's point of view is the positive and I'm 13.83, 13.84 so I know my connection to the track is good for the wire here and I'm getting good voltage here because that's your available track voltage now I'm going to turn the control unit off and hook this stuff back up okay here we are I've got the control unit back on now all the wiring is reattached the joist has been mounted back into place and we can see the wires run uh, very cleanly and uh, very safely it's well protected here it's not going to get snagged on anything and we're good to go and uh, there we go that'll wrap this episode up and this should wrap up this uh, part three series of adding power taps I've got a couple more to add I've got to add one over there and I've got to add one over here and that's it that'll complete the power taps for the layout 
So until then, for right now, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna get myself some chocolate milk because it's chocolate milk and I'm a big boy. Uh, I'm an adult and I can have as much chocolate milk stuff in my chocolate milk as I want, right? Anybody gonna argue with that? I didn't think so. Okay, I wanna thank everybody for their subscriptions and their comments. I really do appreciate them. It makes my day and uh, it really keeps me moving forward on this project. And I hope I can uh, offer something uh, to everybody, maybe a different way of doing things. And I hope that uh, everybody has a good night. And if you have any comments or questions, please uh, feel free to hit me up. That's why I'm here. That's why I'm doing this. And maybe I can learn something from somebody else if they have a better way of doing things. Now's a good time. If anybody has another suggestion on doing power taps, I'd like to try it out and incorporate it. So uh, that being said, I'm going to go get my chocolate milk. I want everybody to have a wonderful day. And thanks again for watching. I appreciate everything. We'll see you next time.